second chorus is yes they know that we are christians by our love to be a christian a disciple of christ means we must love one another forgive and show mercy to everyone by this all people will know that we are christians so let us ensure that we love one another so as to be known and identified as people of god yes they know that we are christians by our love one main identity which our lord jesus himself established and that is love a christian has many identities called the fruit of the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love it is seen in joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness and self control do join us in this chorus let there be love shared among us a melody a lively number a song that is sent from above the psalmist says the lord is my strength and my shield my heart trusts and leans on him therefore in my heart there rings a melody <clears throat> Thank you. 
Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we welcome you to this morning worship service. May we all kindly rise for the procession. Let us begin this worship service in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us sing together the opening hymn, number seven, as we worship God this morning.
as we remain standing let us follow the second order of worship we will follow the prayer of adoration of the trinity found on page 57 <clears throat> holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory glory be to you o lord most high Holy are you, O God. Holy are you, O Almighty. Holy are you, O Immortal. O Lord, our Redeemer, who was crucified for us, have mercy upon us. O Lord, Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. O Lord, accept our prayers and praises and have mercy upon us. Congregation, kindly be seated. Let us pray. Praise be to you, O God the Father, who created all things by your power and wisdom and loved the world so as to give your Son to be our Savior. Praise be to you, O God the Son, who was made human like us in all things except sin and was delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. Praise be to you, O God, the Holy Spirit, who does lead us into all truth and does shed abroad the love of God in our hearts. All praise and glory be to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. Let us enter into a time of confession. For if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I will get up and go to my father and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your child. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us kneel and examine ourselves in silence. Let us humbly confess our sins to the Almighty God by saying together the first prayer of confession. Almighty and most merciful God, we have heard and strayed from your ways like loud sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. Holy laws. We have left undone those things which we should have done, and we have done those things which we should not have done. There is no health in us. to live a godly, righteous, and just life. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon and remission for all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we all stand for the peace. Having been forgiven, and made whole through our peacemaker, let us continue to live together in peace. God's peace challenges us and guides us towards the acts of justice, peace, and integration of the whole creation. Let us say shalom, peace to one another, and give each other a sign of reconciliation and peace. The peace of the Lord be with you, also with you. 
you may share the peace with each other peace be with you 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 all peace be with you as we remain standing let us pray together the collect for the day on page 2 in the pew slip let us pray empowering god who meets us in our workplaces help us to identify you in our workplaces as disciples could recognize our lord in the sea when they were fishing enable us to find your enlightening presence among those who toil hard in their places of employment enable us to accommodate the deprived ones and to be kind towards people around us so that they may find shelter comfort and hope in our spaces this we ask in the name of our lord jesus who continue to meet us in our workplaces and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god forever amen congregation kindly be seated let us now listen to the scripture readings we will first have the reading from the old testament The Old Testament lesson for this morning is from the book of Ruth chapter 2 verses 1 to 18. Ruth chapter 2 beginning to read at verse 1. Now Naomi had a relative of her husband's a worthy man of the clan of Elimelech whose name was Boaz. And Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, "Let me go to the field and glean among the ears of grain." after him in whose sight i shall find favor and she said to her go my daughter so she set out and went and gleaned in the field after the reapers and she happened to come to the part of the field belonging to boaz who was of the clan of elimelech and behold boaz came from bethlehem and he said to the reapers the lord be with you and they answered The Lord bless you. Then Boaz said to his young man who was in charge of the reapers, "Whose young woman is this?" And the servant who was in charge of the reapers answered, "She is the young Moabite woman who came back with Naomi from the country of Moab." She said, "Please let me glean and gather among the sheaves after the reapers." So she came and she has continued from early morning until now except for a short rest then boaz said to ruth now listen my daughter do not go to glean in another field or leave this one but keep close to my young women let your eyes be on the field that they are reaping and go after them have i not charged the young men not to touch you and when you are thirsty Go to the vessels and drink what the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face, bowing to the ground, and said to him, "Why have I found favor in your eyes, that you should take notice of me, since I am a foreigner?" But Boaz answered her, "All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told to me, and how you left your father." and mother and your native land and came to a people that you did not know before the lord repay you for what you have done and a full reward be given you by the lord the god of israel under whose wings you have come to take refuge then she said i have found favor in your eyes my lord for you have comforted me and spoken kindly to your servant though i am not one of your servants and at meal time boaz said to her come here and eat some bread and dip your morsel in the wine so she sat beside the reapers and he passed to her roasted grain and she ate until she was satisfied and she had some left over 
When she rose to glean, Boaz instructed his young men, saying, Let her glean even among the sheaves, and do not reproach her. And also pull out some from the bundles for her, and leave it for her to glean, and do not rebuke her. So she gleaned in the field until evening. Then she beat out what she had gleaned, and it was about an ephah of barley. And she took it up and went into the city. Her mother-in-law saw what she had gleaned. She also brought out and gave her what food she had left over after being satisfied. Here ends the Old Testament lesson. Thanks be to thee, O God. May we all stand for the responsive reading of Psalm 15. O Lord, who shall sojourn in your tent? Who shall dwell in your holy hill? He walks blamelessly and does what is right and speaks truth in his heart. Who does not slander with his tongue and does no evil to his neighbor, nor takes up a reproach against his friend, in whose eyes a wild person is despised, but who honors those who fear the Lord, who swears to his own hurt and does not change. Let us say together, who does not put out his money at interest and does not take a bribe against the innocent, he who does these things shall never be moved. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Congregation, kindly be seated. Let us now listen to the epistle reading. The epistle lesson is taken from the book of Acts. The epistle lesson is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 9, reading from verses 36 to 43. Acts 9, 36 to 43. Dorcas restored to life. Now there was in Joppa a disciple named Tabitha, which translated means Dorcas. She was full of good works and acts of charity. In those days, she became ill and died. And when they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Since Lida was near Joppa, the disciples, hearing that Peter was there, sent two men to him, urging him, please come to us without delay. Peter rose and went with them. And when he arrived, they took him to the upper room. All the widows stood beside him, weeping and showing tunics and other garments that Dorcas made while she was with them. But Peter put them all outside and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And he gave her his hand and raised her up. Then calling the saints and widows, he presented her alive. 
and it became known throughout all Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. And he stayed in Joppa for many days with one Simon, a tanner. Here ends the epistle lesson. Thanks be to thee, O God. I now invite the Neighborhood Fellowship to render a special song. Sit on. Our special song for this morning's worship is titled, There is a Beautiful God Up Above. We now wish to take you through a great song with a melodious tune to uplift your spirits. We pray and hope that this song will inspire and encourage you. It's a song about a merciful God who cheers you. It's about a loving God who cares for you. Finally, it's a call to serve and adore our God Almighty.
We thank the Neighborhood Fellowship for the special song. Let us all stand for the gospel reading. Today's gospel lesson is taken from the gospel of Judon, chapter 21, and verse 1 to 14. John 21, starting from verse 1. Jesus appears to seven disciples. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twins, Nathanael of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zabdi, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? They answered him, No. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. That disciple, whom Jesus loved therefore, said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from the land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples asked him, dared ask him, Who are you? They know it was the Lord, Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. Here ends the gospel lesson. Thanks be to thee, O Christ. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to meditate in God's word, let us all sing together hymn number 118.
Congregation, kindly be seated. Let us pray. John chapter 20, verse 30. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. Loving God, as we continue to identify your signs, the signs of your presence in our lives, as we continue to encounter your glory in our lives and encounter your presence in our lives every day, we thank you, Lord, for the working of your Holy Spirit, which enables us to identify your presence and your guidance and your working in our lives. Enable us, O oh Lord, to continue to see the signs which you have manifested in us. Give us the guidance so that we may be able to always recognize the signs of your presence in our lives. And now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we continue in the post-resurrection meditations after Easter, today being the second Sunday after Easter. In our almanac this year, we are focusing on the post-resurrection experiences as it is record, recorded in the Gospel according to St. John. The first encounter is the empty tomb. At the empty tomb, the disciples, Mary Magdalene and other disciples encountered Christ. Last week, we were able to uh, meditate on the second encounter. That was when the disciples were in uh, fear, when they were hiding in fear in the room, closed, uh, who had, when they had closed themselves out of fear of being persecuted, and how Jesus appeared to them in their fear and in their doubts. And of course, Thomas being a person who would not affirm it unless he saw the risen Lord makes the affirmation that my Lord, my God, and that becomes a, an expression, expression of, how, of the fear of the disciples. It becomes an expression of how the disciples themselves who were in fear later received the Holy Spirit. And today's encounter is the third encounter that is mentioned in the Gospel according to Saint John, where the disciples are fishing by the sea by the lake of uh, Galilee, Sea of Galilee, and Jesus encounters them. The third encounter is very special because it continues with the narrative of John. John is trying to tell us something. All the narratives in the Gospel according to St. John follow a very distinct pattern. John is not just focusing all the Gospels do not just focus on the resurrection and end their narration of the gospel. They don't just account for only the resurrection and stop there. As we have seen last week, all the gospels dwell much on the post-resurrection experiences. And that is a very significant aspect for us because the early church is an outcome of the post-resurrection experiences. Our Almanac also is very structured in that way. After, the, after Easter, six weeks for after Easter, we dwell entirely on the post-resurrection experiences. That is almost more than almost two months. And it concludes with the observance of the day of Pentecost. The ascension and then the day of Pentecost. It concludes with that. So our meditations after Easter, Easter is not the end in it. But our uh, uh, faith almanac, the church almanac, is structured in such a way that the church can always affirm the post-resurrection experience as the basis of the formation of the church. And we today are part of that legacy because even in the epistles and in Acts of the Apostles, it is the post-resurrection experience which became the basis of the church. And we are a continuation of that. For us, every Sunday, you know, today inadvertently the 
and the online link also says easter sunday but in a way every sunday for us is a recollection of that the empty tomb because the early church on the first day of the week they observed the resurrection it was a remembrance not just of the breaking of the bread acts of the apostles is very clear luke records in detail every day they gathered together to break bread in time for prayer and fellowship and sabbath the observance of sabbath then moved on to the first day of the week because it was the resurrection day so for us uh, in the as the as it was in the roman context sunday being the first day of the week in the roman calendar the church the early church and we too continue in that tradition where the first day of the week is the observance or the remembrance or always a remembrance of the resurrection and so as we continue to keep that experience the resurrection experience in our lives we continue to affirm that christ is with us in every day of our lives christ is encountering with us christ encounters us christ confronts us every day and today's theme is about the identification of christ to identify christ we are continuing our theme in the line of john john has a very clear purpose of why he writes the book in john chapter 20 verse 30 john is very clear he says he writes to the early church he says there are many signs there are many many signs which are not written in the book very often we also uh, kind of limit our understanding of christ and the resurrection experience of christ only to scripture because john's writing is very clear he says there are many signs which christ gave and which christ did in the presence of the disciples which are not written in this book but these are written these are written so that those who read it it implies that those who read it can believe that jesus is the christ and the son of god and that by believing you may have life in his name that you may have a life that you may have a meaningful life by believing you may have a purposeful life that by believing you have new meaning in your life that by believing your life is transformed and that's where for us the narration comes back we come back to the narration how the disciples reacted before we go into the explanation of the passage and the implications of it we have two other additional texts which are given in the old testament and in the epistle reading in the old testament we are to look at ruth and in the new testament we are looking at a woman called dorcas a jew but a roman citizen a greek citizen and whose life is mentioned in the acts of the apostles and whose miraculous coming back to life becomes a testament of god's resurrection and god's grace now ruth for us in the old testament the the passage in ruth chapter 2 verse 1 to 18 reminds us of how boaz identifies ruth there are many servants in the field and boaz identifies this young woman who is not one of the servants but who is gathering the leftover uh, grains that is there in the field what boaz also identifies is ruth's faithfulness and ruth's steadfastness in being supportive to her mother in law naomi what is very special specially mentioned in this passage is ruth's cons- consistent devotion to her new found family where the passage very clearly demonstrates that she responds she says i am not of your servants i am not of your people and that is the quality that boaz identifies she was a moabite but still she was faithful to her mother in law and to her people and she upholds what what vow she made to naomi that your people are my people your god is now my god she up, she upheld that she didn't change that and that is something that 
Boaz identifies the identification of Ruth's faithfulness. And that identification of Ruth's faithfulness is something that God seeks in us as well. God seeks to identify faithfulness in us as well. And the epistle reading goes to a woman, Dorcas. And uh, Luke records that she was a very devout person, but also a working woman in today's terms. A businesswoman, a woman who could make fine clothes. And the testament of her work was there. The people were mourning her. They were uh, keeping the clothes, that tunic that she had made, and they were mourning for her loss and giving that as a testament, as a witness for her goodness to Peter. Now the uh, New Testament passage, the epistle passage, although it has the miraculous uh, coming back to life of Dorcas, Peter identifies the role that Dorcas played in the early church. A woman who was a working woman, but yet who did a lot of charity, and good works, but through her life, she had identified herself as a servant of God. So in both, in both these two people, Ruth and Naomi, incidentally women, we are able to see how in the context of poverty and in the context of migration as destitutes, Naomi and Ruth, and Ruth in particular, demonstrates faithfulness demonstrate steadfastness. And in the context of Dorcas, we are able to see how Dorcas is brought back to life not just because Peter wanted to show God's power, but it is a restoration of purpose. She had a very important role to play in the church. Her life, her works was a testament. What work she did in the society, what work she did among the people stood as a testament and it was a restoration of her life for her purpose in God. And that is where we are able to come back to the passage today. The disciples are, have experienced the resurrected Lord. In the closed room, Thomas and other disciples, they have experienced the resurrected Lord. It is a wonderful experience for them. But what happens after that? Peter and others, they go back fishing. After experiencing the glory of the resurrected Lord. After seeing the uh, resurrected Lord among them, after even touching the wounds, Thomas is also one of them who has gone back, gone back to fishing. This is a very beautiful metaphor for our spiritual life as well. Beautiful because it depicts the reality of our faith sometimes. We have celebrated the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ two Sundays ago. We have experienced, we have professed our faith in Christ, we have committed our life to Christ, we have dedicated our life for Christ as Christians. But then, after that, we go back to what we want to do. And that's exactly what the disciples did. Their faith journey, even after experiencing the resurrected Lord, did not move beyond it. They go back fishing. And John narrates that, while they were fishing, they caught nothing. They were not very far from the shore. They were very close to the shore, but still they caught nothing. Incidentally, this aspect of not catching any fish is something that happened to the disciples, something that they experienced while, before they encountered Christ. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, there is mention of how Peter and the sons of Zebedee, James and John, were fishing and they didn't catch any fish and then Jesus told them to fish on the right side and then of course they followed Jesus after that. John's narration of this event where the disciples went back to fishing and did not catch any fish is in a way an example of backsliding. It is an, in a way an example of how we sometimes after professing our faith in Christ go back to the ways of the world. We prefer to. It's a, it's a matter of convenience. Sometimes faith becomes a matter of convenience. Not sometimes, most often I think faith is just a matter of convenience for us today. 
when it is convenient for me to worship god when it is convenient for me to affirm my faith in god i will do it but when it is inconvenient when the truth of scripture when the truth of god's guidance is very difficult for us in our life situations and even in our workplaces we conveniently go back to our old ways or we conveniently switch over to the ways of the world because it suits it because it conveniences us if the gospel inconveniences us if the spirit of god inconveniences us if our conscience inconveniences us we silence it we silence god because it inconveniences us and we do what the world does because it conveniences us and this is a example where the disciples follow a very clear principle of convenience okay we have res- experienced the resurrected lord now thomas also has experienced the resurrected christ my doubts are cleared what is there for me to do let me just go back and start doing what i was doing even before i followed christ and that's where christ intervenes again christ identified the going back of the disciples and incidentally this encounter gives us today three perspectives of discipleship itself because the disciples uh, simon peter on one hand john on the other and the two other disciples including thomas all these disciples seven of them actually give us a good perspective of discipleship what are the kinds of discipleship that we can see today in our own context john is the kind of disciple who identified christ while jesus was there at the shore preparing uh, breakfast for them preparing bread for them john identifies it saying that it is the lord that is the discipleship that identifies christ in everyday life where we are able to see christ not just as somebody cooking breakfast at the shore but like john identifying that it is christ who is waiting for us the second kind of discipleship is that of simon the very impulsive simon when he looks at when he realizes that it is christ he jumps into the water and swims to christ the third kind of discipleship is as it is mentioned in the narrative the silent discipleship disciples who don't know what to do at least john and peter have some response john identifies christ peter recognizes christ he goes to meet christ but there are these other disciples who are just eating the breakfast they are just sitting there they're just eating and probably counting the fish the passage tells us that the net was so full of fish that it was almost at the point of breaking but even then it didn't break john also reminds us that the number of fish that they caught the large fish that they caught was 153 now over the years sometimes i have had encounters with people trying asking me is there some numerology in this number 153 friends there is no numerology here bible is not about numerology or anything like that i think the passage that john in the passage that john writes it's very clearly to imply that there were these other disciples who were just counting the fish they were not bothered about the resurrected lord among them the fact that they had a count of the fish go, the, reminds us that they were doing what fishermen are normally doing every time a catch comes they count the fish because that is the next time next next process they will take it and then sell it so the count of fish here implies those disciples who just sat there had the good meal counted the fish who are, who do not know what to do next our theme today is a reminder the third post resurrection experience for us is a reminder of what kind of discipleship that we are called to be it is to remind ourselves of the kind of discipleship that we are called to be to remind ourselves that christ is there at the shore when we are working in our workplaces when we are living our lives when we go through life's uh, routine christ is always there the presence of christ is there 
And in this context, Christ doesn't come in a very beautiful transfer, transfigured apparition or a transfigured place. Christ comes like an ordinary person, so much so that others don't recognize him. And only John, the beloved, recognizes it. And so that is how it is with us. Those who do not know Christ will never recognize the presence of Christ in the world, in our lives. But as disciples, it is our duty. It is inherent in us. It implies that a disciple should recognize Christ. And that recognition or that identifying Christ in our everyday life is the core of discipleship. Discipleship is the beginning of the church. The church is a community of disciples. Acts of the Apostles records that it's not just the 12 who are referred to as disciples. Those who followed Christ, Dorcas is also one of the disciples and many other disciples. And so it is with us today. We are disciples of Christ. The church is a church because we are disciples of Christ. Not disciples who just count the fish. Not disciples who just eat the breakfast because God gives. But disciples who recognize, proactively recognizing Christ in our everyday life. And this identification of Christ in our life today defines is what kind of Christians we are. The whole body of Christ, the church, the body of Christ is defined and redefined only when the church always is a means and a tool to enable people to identify Christ. The church or the body of Christ is a body of Christ only when the church becomes a means for people to encounter Christ. Just like in the Old Testament where Boaz's field became a place, a working place for Ruth and a space for her to encounter Boaz, the goodness of Boaz. So also the church is a place, it is a space. It is a space for everyone to encounter Christ. But when they encounter Christ, it is the body of Christ that should enable others to identify Christ. And it begins by us identifying Christ in our everyday life. Very often spirituality is only limited to piety and spiritual aspects. But our spirituality is earthly. It is an earthly spirituality. Our spirituality is in everything that we do. Our spirituality is manifested in our daily life just like Dorcas's workmanship was manifest in the tunic that she wears. Our workmanship or our faith is manifest in our workmanship. Our faith is manifest in our works. And that's why James said to the early church, faith without works is dead. If our faith is only of faith, and if it is not manifest in our work, then we are just dead in our faith. But if our faith and our works are coherent, if our faith is manifest in what we do, in the things that we do, only then we are true disciples of Christ. Let us pray. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your encounter with us. That there are continuous and visible signs of how you encounter us in our everyday lives. We thank you for quickening our consciences so that we can recognize you are encountering in our lives. We thank you, O Lord, for the guidance of the Holy Spirit which leads us into that which is true and into all truth. Help, help us, O Lord, not to go back into the ways of the world, but help us to identify you in our life situations so that we can identify with you and you in us. May we continue to be your disciples who can experience and give others the resurrection experience and the experience of the risen Lord in their lives as well. May our lives and our church and our community be a space for others to allow others to encounter Christ. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
In the light of what we've heard, let us all stand and affirm our faith in the Apostles' Creed that is found on page 67. I believe in God, the Father Almighty. Congregation, kindly be seated for the announcements. We welcome visitors and friends who prefer to worship with us this morning, and we invite you to continue to be part of the ministry of God in St. John's Church. We wish all the members of our church who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries during this week, and we wish you God's blessings on behalf of the congregation in your new year ahead. Our wings will break for the summer so that we can engage ourselves in the previous ministry for during the summer vacation and the wings will resume in June. However, the prayer fellowship will continue to meet every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. in the church. The VBS ministry for this year is planned between 17th and 28th of April. So the VBS will start on 17th and it will conclude on the 28th. And the theme for this year given by the VBS Ministries is Under His Wings. All the children are requested to assemble in the church by 9 a.m. And the VBS will commence at 9 a.m. and it will conclude at 12.30 p.m. every day. Yesterday, the VBS teachers and volunteers had a workshop to orient themselves to the theme. However, if there are anyone in our church who are still interested to join as teachers or volunteers, you may kindly contact Mrs. Shalini Paranjyoti or Mrs. Suchitra Joseph after the worship service. The, the, we also request the congregation to kindly extend your support in the participation in the VBS ministry as every year. The chart of requirement for VBS is displayed outside and we request you to kindly pledge in your name and your with your phone number so that the office can uh, come, uh, follow it up later for the requirements for the VBS during these 10 days. Obituary notice, we regret to inform you the sad demise of Mrs. Christine J. Devine, 58 years of age, who slept in the Lord on the 11th of April, 2024. Kindly remember the bereaved family in your personal prayers. And we also request you to kindly pray for families and persons who have requested our prayers. Their names are in the pew slip. Let us now enter into a time of prayer. We will follow the prayers on page 68. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. Endow your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. O oh Lord, be gracious to our country. O oh Lord, guide our leaders. Give peace to the world, O oh Lord. O oh Lord, make us mindful of all in trouble and distress. O oh God, send your Holy Spirit upon us. Let us pray. Loving God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your constant presence in our lives. Thank you for enabling us to identify your presence in our lives in all times and in all situations. We thank you for the assurance that you give to us through the Holy Spirit. Enable us to continue to work as your disciples, to be your disciples, and to work towards the work and the mission that you have given to us to love and to serve you among people. 
enable us, O oh Lord, to accommodate those who are deprived of the daily necessities of life. Enable us to accommodate those who are denied the rights of their lives. Enable us, O oh Lord, to be in solidarity with those who are fighting for justice and peace and those who are denied of these things. Enable us, O oh Lord, so that your body, the church, would be a place where everyone would find comfort and hope in you. Guide us and strengthen us in your ministry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the guidance of the Holy Spirit continue to be with us. Amen. May we all stand for the breaking of the bread. We will turn to page 41. How very good and pleasant it is when people of God live together in unity. We who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one bread. Offering is ten sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. As we remain standing, let us sing together hymn number 68, during which time our offertory will be received. I beg your pardon, it is hymn number 187.
us turn to page 41. Let us pray. O oh, Father, you have given us a new and living way to offer ourselves to you. Though unworthy, we come to you as we are. By that way, your son, Jesus of Nazareth. And in his name, we ask you to accept and use us and these gifts, however it best pleases you. All that is created is yours, and everything that we can offer already belongs to you. Amen. Amen. Congregation, kindly be seated. Let us all join together in the prayer of Christ's presence, page 41. Be present, be present, O Jesus, your good high priest, as you were in the midst of your disciples, and make yourself known to us the breaking of the bread, who lives and reigns with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, world without end. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Truly it is right and good to glorify you at all times and in all places by offering you our thanksgiving, O Lord, Holy Father. You spoke and the light shattered darkness, order arose from confusion. You breathed into the rust of the earth and we were formed in your image. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus, you came to us while we wandered. He met us as a refugee, a threatened child. He called us by name to leave what is comfortable, to be his disciples, friends, and partners. With his outstretched arms on the cross and through his death, he bore our sins, and through his resurrection, we are saved. And through your Holy Spirit, you brood over chaos that we create, mothering us and shaping a new creation. You enlighten everyone coming into the world. You inspired the prophets and the apostles to find the right word at the right time. You liberate, equip, and commission your people for the continuance of your mission to make everything new. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim and say your glory. Holy, 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 Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when given thanks to you, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The same way after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we commemorate your death on the cross. We celebrate your resurrection and we await your coming. Eternal God, let your Holy Spirit move in power over us and over these earthly gifts of bread and wine, that they may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ, and that we may become one in him. May his coming in glory find us ever watchful in prayer, strong in truth and love, and faithful in the breaking of the bread. Then at last all peoples will be free, all divisions healed, and with your whole creation we will sing your praise through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor are yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. As we prepare ourselves to come before the Lord's table, reminding ourselves of the purpose and the commission that we have received in Christ, let us say together the prayer of humble access on page 44. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood 
that our sinful bodies and souls may be made clean by his most precious body and blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. When we break the bread, do we not share in the body of Christ? When we lift the cup, do we not share in the lifeblood of Christ? The body of our Lord Jesus Christ, the bread of life, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, the true wine, the things of God for you, the people of God, you may draw near the Lord's table in faith.
having now by faith received the sacraments of the body and blood of Christ let us all stand and give thanks to god in the thanksgiving prayer on page 45 let us pray merciful god of all creation holy father of all people through our lord jesus christ who united all things in his fullness we join your whole creation and exult in exultant praise of your bountiful goodness bless us with new life and fill us with new hope that the rain will come and the hunger will be fed so free from you the reconciling work will be done the love and faith in us will be together and the justice and peace will kiss each other and the whole creation will be filled with your glory amen Let us in faith receive God's blessings. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. recessional hymn is hymn number 238 let us all sing together <clears throat> Lord be with you. 
let us depart in peace.